the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Let your heart be open for an encounter tonight. I honor our father and our mother and our pastor living faith. All of the men and the women of God, Pastor Dangana, please give them a big, big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. I want to start with an encouragement tonight. By the way, I really, really appreciate everyone, especially the workforce. Thank you for all that you keep doing. I have taught you that you do not serve God just because of the presence or the absence of a man. We serve the Lord because we love him. We seek him because he loves us. And that every encounter with Jesus is an encounter that transforms. Men are only vessels. Are we together now? This is an encouragement. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. This is especially for the workforce. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, if that labor is in the Lord. A labor that is in the Lord is a labor that focuses on seeing Jesus glorified. There is a labor that is hypocritical. There is labor that is just for a name. But there is labor as unto the Lord. When your heart is fixed on revealing Jesus, your heart is fixed on bringing Him glory, then any effort directed towards that passion coming from that motivation is called your labor in the Lord. And the Bible says none of it is ever in vain. So let me encourage the workers, the leaders, Pay attention to what you do in the house. It should not be eye service when apostle is around. No, 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 no. Apostle is a man. There is the head of the church, Jesus himself. And I really salute you for your diligence and for everything that you keep doing. Serve the Lord as if he were watching you to reward you. Because that's exactly what is, is happening. The Bible says a worker is worthy of his wages. There are people who serve the Lord for a long time and it doesn't seem like they are rewarded. Most times, it is because the motif for service is wrong. But let me assure every one of you, the leaders, those who labor day and night, I assure you by the God of heaven, your season of reward and your season of appearing is coming. Are we together? There is no such thing as someone comes out from nowhere. No, not in this kingdom. John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. You see, when you walk in the house of God, have that same mentality as you walk when you were employed by someone to pay you. Because many of the things men look for, by reason of your active work in the house of God, God will not permit you to look for what they have looked for again. This is how the kingdom works. There are some things that in kingdom service you have already paid the price for certain secular needs. You will see them coming to you as rewards. And God will let you know that this is coming in honor to your kingdom service. Are we together? Yes. 
it's important for leaders appreciate you when God gives you the gift of good people who stand to lift up the name of Jesus do not trivialize their sacrifices in as much as none of us is indispensable but when people commit to serving Jesus whether at a departmental level in the house it is important part of the principles of leadership is that you must always appreciate people don't do it once don't do it twice do it for as long as they continue to serve are we together praise the name of the Lord all of the fringe benefits that follow service are God's way of saying thank you thank you thank you for your diligence thank you for your diligence so he blesses you with divine health thank you for your diligence so he will make sure that a job you did not apply for just comes to you like that and he says make sure you know why it came so that you will keep it it came by service it will be kept by service hallelujah praise the name of the lord just to share a few things before we begin to pray um my heart is really burdened and the lord began to put it very strong in my heart the need to exhort us tonight along the lines of the word of god we we are living in very very disturbing times especially we who are around the north here you see all of the things that are happening and it is important that believers uh, be conscientized again on the need to be grounded and established in the word acts chapter 20 and verse 32 acts 20 32 Acts chapter 20. And now, brethren. So he's speaking to brethren. Brethren. Brethren are not unbelievers. Brethren are those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. And then to the word of his grace. So he commends us to God and then to his word. Which is able to build you up, the Bible says. And then to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified I commend you to God the greatest gift you can give anyone is to hand him over to the world you can hand him over to a man you can hand him over to an institution but the best handover service happens when you hand a man over to the word of God the Bible says, John chapter 1 verse 1, please pay attention. In the beginning, John 1 verse 1, in the beginning was, not prayer, in the beginning was, not fasting, in the beginning was, not even fellowship, in the beginning was, not church. According to the law of first mention, that means this is the most important component in the life of a man. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fire of God. Jesus is never even called the anointing of God. But he is called the word of God. That means no matter what else is in place in your life, if the word is not in place, you are still in trouble. Please pay attention. If fasting is in place, prayer is in place, fellowship is in place, but the word is missing, is the same thing as saying 10,000 times zero. What is the answer? Zero. Any useful thing minus the word of God still amounts to trouble. No matter what you have in life, prosperity minus the word is trouble. A Christian experience minus the word. The Bible says in the beginning, the law of first mention, which also doubles as priority, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. we we'll read to verse 3. It says the same. That means the word now was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. This is so powerful. All things. How many things? All miracles. All destinies. All lives. All homes. All 
results were made and still continue to be made by that word. It says, without him was not anything made that was made. All things. There are certain things the Bible acknowledges and says, okay, this one can solve some problems. But this one, all things were made. If you ever see creation and manifestation, it came at the instance of the word. All things were made. Your prosperity made by the word. Your safety made by the word. Your longevity by the word. Your confidence by the word. Why am I teaching you this? You see, you have to be able to define the basis of your confidence, especially in this perilous, troublesome times. We live in times now where situations and circumstances will test the truthfulness of your convictions. Are we together? It's easy to generally join believers and say, I believe. But then you get to a point in your life where the truthfulness of your convictions are tested. And we are in such times. So it is important that there is no pretense at all as to your understanding of the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. And without him was not any destiny made that was made. And without him was not any result that was produced at all. You ignore the word of God, you have ignored life. You have ignored the basis for an excelling life. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. If I ask you today as a believer, what is the basis of your confidence? What gives you confidence that you will not die this night? Don't just say a prophet prophesied. Every prophet is a man. No matter how powerful the prophet is. If I ask you why do you think you are going to excel, don't just say I'm in prayer band or I'm in koinonia. These things are wonderful, but they are not the basic reason. They are not the foundational reason. Defend your confidence. In this wicked world, what gives you confidence that you will be favored? What gives you confidence that the power of God will flow through you? As a preacher, what gives you confidence that you will still continue to have membership what gives you confidence that you will keep being promoted in your job in spite of all the tribal sentiments that you see happen many believers have not been able to defend their confidence somehow they know i'm around the things of god so i am safe My assignment tonight is to shake your conviction again before we pray. Believe me, if all I do is teach the word and we share the grace, it was still a miracle service. Because many of us are not necessarily sick. It's just that life is not working. It has refused to work. And that is sickness too. When life refuses, what is sickness? The inability of an organ to work as desired. The organ does not have to be a biological organ alone. When your destiny refuses to work, something is wrong. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Many believers talk about the Word of God, but really, am I doing something wrong? Please help me. Sound technical? If, listen, if your confidence is not in the word of God, I give you one guarantee. Eventually you will be tired. You will not only be tired, you will be angry. Angry at God especially. There are many believers right now angry and disappointed at the God of heaven. Why would you do such a thing? Why is my life like this? Why is my family like this? You're excelling in life. It's not just based on one uncle, one preacher, your location. No, no. You can go anywhere and get the same result if it's the same ignorance that remains in you. Everybody say the word. Say it again. Say the word. Truly speaking, you have to pay attention to what I'm teaching you. You want to become genuinely powerful as a man of God. Run away from some of these superstitious things and focus on the word. There is the hiding place of 
his power. Genuine, authentic, spiritual power that produces God-like kind of result comes from the word. Your confidence in life must be a derivative of God's word. What makes you think you will keep eating every day? I have a job. Is that a wise answer? Can the person who gave you the employment not change his mind? And say for whatever reason we are downsizing. Go. What makes you believe that your home will continue to glorify God? I think my husband is a nice man. He doesn't have any problem. Don't you learn that men change? What gives you confidence in life? The word of God. You must know how to produce results from the word of God. And you, listen, you must know how to trust God. Um, if I'm hungry and I ask you to cook for me, when the meal is prepared, I am happy, but there will still be an element of fear in me because the day you are not there and I'm hungry as usual, that is the day that I'm going to be in trouble. Is that, is that true? But if I know how to cook, and then I allow you cook for me. I have no fear because I benefit from your association. But independently, if situation, if duty calls, I can roll my sleeves and cook. It is good that a man of God and by God's grace for as long as we continue to live, I'm committed to speaking over your life, teaching you truth. But what happens at times when you have to stand alone? When Joshua Selman is not there, when Koinonia is not there, when you are face to face with real life situations, this is it. The word of God becomes your anchor. It becomes your basis. So that when you are receiving prophecy, when you are receiving words of knowledge, when you are receiving the miraculous, whatever it is, you can still rest in the fact that thank God for this man of God. Thank God for what they are doing. But I have found your word by myself in truth. I have believed it. It is true. Are we together now? You must be able to defend your confidence. What gives you confidence that the arrows that fly every day, the noisome pestilences, the destruction that wasted in noonday, what gives you confidence that you will escape from it? Because others spoke just like you and these arrows brought them down. So what gives you confidence? Let me tell you this, the physical terrorism you see, as bad as it is, is nothing compared to the one happening in the realm of the spirit. It's only because you have seen the physical evil, but if your eyes were to be open in the realm of the spirit, you would beg to return back and still manage what you are seeing, as bad as it is. Arrows that fly by day. You wake up in the morning, you are interfacing between them. You are in a bus, you are in a car, there are arrows flying that you do not see. What gives you confidence that one of those arrows will not hit you and bring you down? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Are we blessed? What gives us the confidence that lives will be touched tonight? What gives us the confidence that people will come tonight to hear what Jesus has to say? Oh, people like Joshua Selman. No, that's a stupid reason. No. This is it. We foolishly, stupidly found this word. And in which childlike faith we have held on to it. And it continues to produce wonder after wonder. When T.L. Osborne held this word together with Kenneth Hagin, when there was an outpouring during their days, many people began to delve into all kinds of superstitious things and they made a statement. They said, we will outlive you all because you are focusing on just gifts and things and we are establishing this truth by the word. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, they began to fall like rain. And at the end of it, this man still stood up until the end. Anything that does not come by the word and from the word is not real. Whatever you are handling, you are only holding a rubber ring. It will return back. Are we together now? Yes. So 
in as much as you desire to be healed, in as much as you desire a prophetic word to push you, in as much as you desire all of these things, you will be amazed at how many believers are not interested in the word. We are interested in men of God, and that is wonderful. There is a place for that. We are interested in oil. If I bring a bottle of oil right now and I count it, I lie down on that oil and I carry that oil right now, I say share it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong and I'm not being sarcastic. Many of you will jump at that oil with all your heart. You will open it, turn it on your head and believe absolutely that your life will change. Nothing is wrong with oil, but oil in itself is a product of a tree. That tree came by the word. Oil comes from olive. Oil does not come from heaven. It came from olive. Not even angels brought the oil. It's human beings. Some of them were not even born again. The people who produced that oil were business people. They crushed olive and brought oil out of it. You fry egg with that oil and eat and it does not heal you. You put it in a cream and use it to rub your body head to toe and yet it does not heal you. So it is not the oil, it is the word in the oil. Are we together now? What makes you believe that when men say there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up? You see, we have to grow past the realm of tell them, preach, preacher, and blind excitement with no result. And you start sitting down to say, Lord, help me understand this thing. It's a risk to not know this as a father. It's a risk to not know this as a leader. It's a risk to not know this as a preacher. What then becomes the basis of your confidence? Empty boasting that will eventually lead to shame. He was the son. So I have eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal When you get up from a dream, and in that dream you see yourself as usual in secondary school, in spite of the fact that you have listened to the mystery of deliverance, in spite of the fact that you fell down every miracle service, at the end of the prayer you still went back, you still saw yourself in the same secondary school, saw yourself with dead people, saw yourself with this. When you wake up, what then happens to you? Wait for another 30 days? What if it's an arrow that was meant to kill you? And that arrow is so desperate for your going down, it cannot wait 30 days. Miracle service is merely a support system to help your growth and to stand by the privilege of the election of grace to provide these spiritual supplies whilst you are growing. Whilst you are growing. The goal is not to keep spoon feeding every month. You are at the same spiritual level. September, same spiritual level. Oh, it's three days to another miracle service. No matter what I've gone through, I've endured for 30 days. No. A time should come in your life when, when you come for miracle service, yes, you are coming for an upgrade. But primarily speaking, primarily speaking, you are now coming as an evangelist. Drawing people to encounter because you have left the realm where you needed certain levels of. There are many things we need today that if we contend for the word, you will not, no matter what kind of prayer is prayed here, if you don't grow, certain things will recycle again. Everybody, Jesus Jesus healed, still died later on. Everybody Jesus raised from the dead still died later on. There is no promise in scripture that the people Jesus healed, that was the last time they ever became sick. No. When he healed them, he did not just leave them like that. He said, oh, come on. More than healing, more than miracles, sit down and listen. Because one day I will not be here physically. Okay, 
blind Bartimaeus, now your eyes open. Come and sit down and learn. Woman with the issue of blood, I have helped to save 12 years of embarrassment. But sit down and learn. Man born with the withered hand, I announced my messiahship and I said, stretch your hands. Don't just stretch and remain like that. Madman, you who are delivered from a legion of demons, come and sit down too. Everybody he healed, he didn't leave them like that. Come, join the lecture because more than the miracle, I want to connect you to the word so that when I go and the Holy Ghost comes, you can have the confidence that I have the basis of victory. Victory in this kingdom is at the instance of the word, not superstition. Not superstition. Get away from a life of guesswork and superstition. You must understand the basis of a victorious life. I repeat, if you don't, you will live an angry life. Believe me when I tell you this. It will affect your health till it destroys you. You will blame God, you will blame men, you will blame systems. And without him was not anything made that was made. If you will ever experience an excelling life spiritually in your job, your health, your home, I guarantee you lasting victory comes from the word. Men can try to help you, but there is a limit to which men can go. The word of God does not only help, it creates it creates, it creates, it makes something to appear that was not. Two men build their houses. Please look up. Jesus is teaching now his parables that two men took out time to laboriously construct their homes. One built his house on a rock. That rock was the word. The other one built his home on sand. What is sand? Opinions. Assumptions. Sand means assumptions. Facilitating assumptions. I believe this today. I believe that tomorrow. The Bible says the same thing happened to both of them. Everything that happens to a failure happens to a success too. The difference is that they know what to do with it. Hallelujah. Everyone say the word of God. Koinonia, hear me. If I succeed in bringing you to a position, young and old, where you are connected to the word, where the word of God becomes priority in your life, I have given you the keys to a victorious life. Brothers and sisters, if you don't pay attention to what I'm saying, when you begin to fail and fail and fail and fail, your conclusion will be, no, there must be more that people are doing. I'm doing the same thing and I'm not getting results, you say. If it is the word of God, I assure you, in a shocking way, it will produce results. It's true. The word is a lifter. The word is a blesser. The word can bring honor to your life. The word can reveal Jesus through your life. This is not just a preacher's talk. It is true. Apostle, you don't know my background. That's why. Ask Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And yet the best gift came out of Nazareth. Apostle, you don't know my condition. Ask Lazarus. Lazarus. The word said, come forth. And Lazarus had to come forth. Hallelujah. Let me share with you very quickly four keys that can help you use the word to produce victory. Four keys. Honestly, in order of priority, my priority tonight is not so much about praying for people. I will. We will pray, we will cast out devils, minister to the sick. But more than this, I am telling you sincerely, my priority is that you get this thing. Respect the word. Respect it. You are not going to invent a new strategy that helps you to win and produce victory. There is already a strategy. Fathers that have gone ahead of us, some have joined the cloud of witnesses with all kinds of limiting backgrounds. They came 
and they found this word, they held it like fools until it produced an enviable destiny. And in every generation, you will still find arrogant people who will not pay attention to the word. Ask Noah. When Noah gave a word, he was he built through the word of God, he built an ark, an ark of safety made of gopher wood, three stories. He began to beg those people, rain is coming, rain is coming, you have a chance now. There is still room in that ark. It was not three stories for nothing. And the men came and laughed at him. 120 years of mockery and laughter. And God said, no problem. All the animals were obedient to what Noah was saying. They said, we know rain will come. Let's go quietly. But the arrogant men said, no, Noah is talking nonsense. 120 years. It was God himself that closed that door. The moment God closed the door, the earth brought water. The heavens brought water. If you were in between that impact, it was death for you. They all perished, not one lived. My greatest dread in life is not to anchor my faith on shadows and the philosophies of men and the ideas of the arrogance of men that the excellency of power might be of God. ministry by the word no matter where you are you will excel you do ministry by opinions you do ministry by tribalism you do ministry by all kinds of human connections you will suffer as if God did not call you it is the word it is only the word that is able to bring as many as should be saved it is the word that can convict a sinner and turn that sinner into a saint it is the word of God that can transform the one who is saved like I've taught you it is also at the instance of the word listen to me the assignment of the anointing is to prove the truthfulness of the word without the word the anointing does not have a ministry don't get into that understanding that the anointing has an independent ministry out of the world it's a lie it's a lie the anointing came into being because of the presence of the word every time the word of God goes forth then the anointing has a ministry what is the ministry of the anointing the ministry of validation it proves and shows right now as you are listening to me there are people who are sick but you'll be surprised that as you are listening now some of them might not be healed as at yet there are people who have been oppressed there are spirits they are listening to this sermon and yet they will not just run and go like that because the word that sends them has not been sent so the anointing is still hovering around the air but it looks like this atmosphere is not anointed but when the word is released then the anointing now finds place the anointing can be around your life forever captured in your head captured in bottles captured in all kinds of mediums and yet not produce anything because the activator of the anointing is the word the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following let me give you four keys is God helping us tonight those outside are we together say hallelujah those outside amen number one the first key you want to profit from the word you want to produce a life of victory by the word the first key is study and meditate on the word don't think what i'm sharing with you is, is basic these are the irrefutable keys that have been used by people for generations and centuries ignored by many to their peril honored by many to their exaltation the choice is yours study and meditate on the word of God 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 let's run to a few scriptures 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 did I get that? 2.15 2.15 I meant to say Thank you. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study 
to show yourself approved. Shout approved. What does approved mean? Approved means you can move forward. When you have a project and you need clearance, we call it approval. Is that true? When you are not approved, your project is not approved, what happens? There is retrogression. You remain there for a long time. When they stamp it, they say approved. That means move forward. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. There is a relationship between spiritual laxity for the word and shame. There is a relationship. That shame and reproach will remain the lot of one who is spiritually lazy and would not study the word. Pray for me, pray for me. Lay hands on me as wonderful as that. That is only profitable if foundationally you have a passion for the word. Study. He didn't say buy a Bible and keep. You have many Bibles. He didn't say buy many versions and keep. He didn't say buy a phone where you download many Bibles and just have them there. Giving a form of spirituality and not benefiting from it. Study. Study means be diligent. Sit down. Pay attention. Give it your attention. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Same Second Timothy chapter 3. Chapter 3 it is, I believe, verse 15. Let's see. There's a scripture that is in my heart. Yeah, that's right. And that from a child, 3.15, 2 Timothy. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture, which are able, the scripture has the ability to make you wise unto salvation, wise unto healing, wise unto lifting, wise unto favor, anything that is captured in salvation. Hallelujah. Study. He says, and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. Meditate. Meditate on the Word of God. Meditate. What does it mean to meditate? To ponder. Ponder, think, open your Bible. Lord, I don't want to live my life in shadows. If I believe that there is such a reality as divine health, such a reality as divine life, such a reality as longevity, I don't just want to assume that because that spiritual reality is around, it is at work in me. Study. God forbid I will never die. And you find out that when these things come, that fortification is not there, you go down. I will never be poor, people say, and yet they are poor. I will never be a failure, yet they continue to fail. Study. Everybody says study. Study. Study requires time and attention. Don't give the word five minutes, ten minutes, and give browsing and social media two hours, three hours. There's nothing wrong with social media in its own, but you have to be able to obtain grace from God to manage the demonic attack that comes to life through those platforms. There are many people whose spiritual concentration has almost gone to zero because of this mismanagement of social media. You wake up in the morning, you quickly want to check your email or check something, and before you know it, five hours, you are seated there. The day has gone. You woke up by six until twelve, you have not said in Jesus' name. You are checking. Time just flies. And I told you the unit of destiny is what? Time. That means it's not only time that fly, that went. Part of you has gone, never to be recovered again. Whereas in that same time, someone has spent time studying, listening to teachings, praying in the spirit. God, should, God, let me tell you this. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, you can't give your destiny 10 minutes of carelessness and expect the result of one who gives diligence. When you are sleeping, someone is awake. Praying, studying, learning. The results cannot be the same, brothers and sisters. Study and meditate on the word. This Bible is God's gift to you. 
Study, open it, read it, listen to quality teachings that help to build your spirit. Don't just listen with your hands on your pocket. Buy a notebook or whatever device you will use. But when you listen to a message, study does not mean just hear. Study means hear, stop. You write something down. There are times a 50 minutes message, you finish it in three days because you have to keep stopping every five, five minutes. What has he now said? Some of you finish a message of 50 minutes in 15 minutes because you forward everything to the point where you, you like. Take seriously what I'm saying. We're dealing here with matters of destiny. We're living in very perilous times where if you don't take your destiny serious, your life may go for it. There is a time to play. There is a time to be serious. You hear of wars and rumors of wars. You hear of people just dying like that. You hear of things happening to people. What is the basis of your own fortification? Don't make the mistake of Esther and say, no, it will never get to me. Mordecai, you are outside the gate. Mordecai said, be careful. Don't you think this will not come to you. Her man's plot is not those outside. He wants to start with those outside. But the idea is everybody. Her man. When her man is done with everybody, then the king himself. You know, Aman was eyeing where the king was sitting. I will tell you, when the king called and said, what shall we do? Esther 6, number 6, I think. What shall we do to this person? Haman came to the king and he said, What shall be done unto the man in whom the king delighted to honor? And Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? Stupid man. You see how the devil destroys people? When he begins to plant these thoughts, and hear what he said. For the man who the king delighted to honor was lost. Let the royal apparel, that means he has been looking at it, be brought unto the which the king used. <laughs> you see it there? And the horse that the king rided upon, and the crown upon his head, what is left? If you wear the, the apparel, that means his goal is that when he's done with Esther and Mordecai and these people, one day he will come to the king and say, you think I was working for nothing? Look at already, he had premeditated. He never said, let me think about it. He said, I know there are three things. The crown, how can you carry a crown and put on someone's head to reward him? If the king gave her man, he would have passed a decree as a king immediately and say, I will not return back again as a normal person. So he gave him the assignment. He said, let this be done to Mordecai immediately. He went and met his wife. The wife said, what right? He said, Jew. He said, you are dead. You are dead. You didn't just attack a man. You attacked a covenant. He said, this your destruction has started. This is not the last version. And she was right. Study and meditate. You open your Bible and you begin to meditate. What is the key to long life? Don't say, I know there is long life. Do you have it? Don't say, nobody will kill me. God forbid. Have you found security through the word? Don't say, I will never beg me. God forbid. Have you not heard of billionaires that one time had empires and today they are beggars? They are still alive for not history. I will remain relevant forever till Jesus comes. I agree with you. Show me the basis of your confidence. I repeat to you, it is a risk to depend on any other thing that is not the word of God. It will fail you eventually. Study and meditate on the word. I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and a rejoicing find scriptures that attend to the various areas of your life what what gives you confidence that you will not be buried me god forbid i can't be buried people have spoken like that what gives you confidence that your children will not be armed robbers god forbid i didn't look for anybody's trouble that is a superstitious statement 
who have come from the houses of sincere people and later became all kinds. All these terrorists you see came from somewhere. What gives you the basis? The word of God. What gives you the basis that as you grow older, your organs will still be functioning well? Look at what statistics say. Men, women, you know what medical statistics say. So what gives you confidence that as you are celebrating your birthday, you call it happy birthday every year. What gives you confidence that your body will remain, that his physical strength was not abated? Joshua and Caleb. It's good to eat well. But can I tell you this? There is a dimension of longevity and vitality. Man shall live by two things. Matthew 4 verse 4. Food and words. Men don't live by food alone. If the only thing you are eating is physical food, a time will come, something will happen to you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So we see the two things that keep men alive. Bread and words. Your nourishment, eat well. But then whilst you eat well, make sure the bread of the word is also eaten. And the Bible says if you, there is vitality and the word, you will live. Number two. The second key that can help you use the word to produce victory in your life. I said number one is study and meditate on the word. Number two, believe the word. Believe the word. Don't just study, believe the word. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Believe the word. Beloved people of God, believe the word. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe all things how many things all things are possible not to him that wants them all things are not possible to him who is in need all things are not possible to him who needs the miracle they are possible to him that believe is from the word pistis convicted a depth of conviction and persuasion things are possible unto him that believe. Hebrews chapter 3, Paul began to teach, let's read from 18 and 19. Paul began to teach why God's people have not yet entered their Sabbath. He says, and to whom swear that they should not enter his rest. That means, who did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But to them that believe not. Next verse. So we see that they could not enter in. Why? Because of unbelief. There is a rest for the people of God. But those who had the word did not believe it. And the Bible says the word did not profit them. There is a Sabbath. There is a spiritual Sabbath. There is a financial Sabbath. There is a ministerial Sabbath that believing the word of God can bring you into. there is wickedness. They believe in it. There are people who believe in evil. There are people who believe in witches, believe in demons. There are people who believe in disfavor. There are people who believe that they are disadvantaged. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. 
Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 19. You enter your Sabbath on the strength of your conviction. Matthew chapter 13 from verse 57 and 58. Matthew chapter 13, 57 and 58. But they were offended in him. Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. 58. And the Bible says, and he did not, and he did not many mighty works there. Why? Because of their unbelief. Not because his power was limited. There is a relationship between your believing and mighty works. He could not do mighty works because of their unbelief. You have an assignment to challenge unbelief in your life. It must be a daily project like bathing and like eating. How much of unbelief is left in me? Today is Tuesday. I must reduce that much. That means by morning when you wake up 6 o'clock, by the time you are sleeping, if there is a way of measuring your level of unbelief, it should have drastically reduced. Why? Through the fire of the word. If your unbelief is 30% and you sleep, it should, it should not be 30% for that whole day. You had an opportunity to deal with it, squeeze it and shrink it until there is nothing left. Are we together? Believe the word. Have conviction. Tonight as you are sitting, do you believe that God can lift? Do you believe God can bless? Do you believe? Do you know many people actually don't believe these things again? We have been in church so long and we are used to the power of God. I know when apostle begins to pray now, people will shout, they will bring them, they will heal the sick, they will lay hands on prayer requests and will share the grace. And heaven is looking at you and saying, but look at your life. Nothing has changed. You can invite people for miracle service. They come and sit down. You have faith in their own healing and their own miracle. Not your own transformation. You can even guarantee them. I guarantee you will not be the same. And truly they won't be the same. I believe. I really believe. In the power of God, I believe that anywhere Jesus is, there must be a manifestation of his power, his grace, and his love. I believe this. Number three, so one, study and meditate on the word. Number two, believe the word. Number three, speak the word. You see, this is the proper order for speaking the word, or what we call confession, homologio. Just blindly speaking, I shall not die, I shall live, my life is blessed. It doesn't happen that way. It is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Your first assignment is not your speech, your first assignment is your heart. Is that true? Yes. When your heart becomes full of that reality, you cannot but speak. Mark 11 and verse 23 and 24 mark 11 23 and 24 verily i say unto you whosoever shall say to this mountain mountain there means anything at all that can limit you be thou removed be cast into the sea and shall not doubt what's it now shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe here it is again that those things which he saith not just he believed from believing, he saith. It is what you say, believing. You see that? That shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. The law, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. You must learn to speak the word of God. See, let me tell you, this is not a word of faith thing. This is the way believers live. This entire world is activated by words. Spirits, demons, men, they all walk by words. Even God himself walks by words. Listen, when you read the same story of Esther, you will find out that before her man died, he had manipulated the king to make a decree. That decree was going to bring a total annihilation of the Jews. Is that true? Now Haman had been hung up over the gallows that he built. 
but the decree still stood. Esther's next assignment, now that Haman was gone, Israel was still in trouble. He had died, but the word had gone forth. So Esther had to find a way of meeting the king to say, Oh king, what do we do now? The king said, I've made the decree. Okay, I know how to counsel that. I will make another decree. It takes words to kill words. I will make, I can't change the decree I said, but I can use another one to superimpose it. I said yesterday I'm a failure. I said yesterday I'm defeated. I said yesterday I'm weak. I said it in ignorance or in spiritual laziness. Whether you like it or not, those words have gone. They are in your future waiting. But you can do something about it. You can send another one. Send another one. Kings change decrees by making other decrees. So I said I am a failure. I said I am weak. I said my life, the glory of God is not seen in my life. But now that I know that words carry implication, it does. It does. Words carry more than emotional implication. Emotional implication is the least level of their impact. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Is that true? Yes. Please, if it's raining um, and for any reason there is no place, if, if it means just squeezing into the canopies, we sincerely apologize. Please, ushers, PR, just help them walk. I believe that there should be more canopies, overflow three, all of them, just squeeze. If there is need, you may need to bring some inside. It's not the best, but we may have to make do, just make some sacrifices for tonight. It's better than leaving God's people in the rain. So let's help to manage that, please. Hallelujah. Are we together? If there is need for that, we may have to make just shift a bit, shift the chairs, even if it means to add a few more chairs. Please, I apologize, but it's an inconvenience that we have. It's a season and there may not be anything we can do about it. So please do well. If you are beckoned on to make that arrangement, I think we should just do that in one minute. We'll be praying in the spirit while we're doing that. Let me be patient and allow...
thank you for your sacrifice. Reminds me of Renhard Bonke Crusade when I went there. In the crusade, you don't see it. From opening prayer till the grace. Your prayer is to find where to stand. You've heard my story. I stood for six hours. From 3 p.m. in the afternoon till 9. We're excellent people, but when times of sacrifice calls like this, we must obtain grace to do our best. Please just cooperate with the protocol and the ushers. We'll just be here if the rain subsides, then the crowd is much, so the canopies can only do so much. Hallelujah. I'm being patient because I want at least let's get a bit of our attention and then it's raining seriously. Whatever sacrifice you make, no, 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 sit down, guys, don't worry. Sir, mommy, our mother can come and sit on my seat. She can come and sit. Let's, there's no reason why we should allow. Just carry her gradually. She can come and sit. And then maybe one other elderly person can sit. Make sure it's one. The, the, the pastor, pastor, sir, you may come and sit in front so that there will be space. Please come. Help her. Hold her bag, my friend. Be a responsible gentleman. She's holding her bag. standing. That's all I do. The rain will not be forever, I assure you. It will subside and then we'll walk. But that's, that's the whole idea. Hallelujah. It's good you have these experiences sometimes. You will add it to your spiritual walk. So that tomorrow you can say, I remember when I was passionately seeking the things of God. I stood in the rain. I hope there are no children outside or at least safe within the canopies. If it gets bad, we are going to send the men. If it gets bad, we'll send the men. Of course, of course, of course. You should know me already. These are some of the benefits of masculinity. When duty calls, you go out. There's a canopy. Please just be patient. It's still a miracle service. Please don't leave our children outside. Everybody cannot come in. There is a limit to which... When rain falls on you, it doesn't kill you. I am 
standing whether inside or outside if you are from 60 years and above just lift your hands somebody will stand up here for you to sit down please make sure if you are not 60 years God is we know you can see 60 years our fathers if you don't look like any of our fathers yet don't embarrass yourself please if we have any elderly person who is standing who are people of honor arbitrarily I didn't if 60 years and above we'll manage it for a while once the weather is fine we'll go back huh? don't forget what I'm teaching can I continue are we good let's recap on all that I've shared point number one study and meditate on the word of God number two believe the word believe the word number three speak the word speak the word speak the word it's one thing to believe but you also have to obtain grace from God to speak speak the word speak the word speak the word how do you speak the word number one in prayer to God and number two you speak it over negative situations and circumstances you can speak the word returning God's word to him bringing it before him presenting your case but you can also speak the word over negative situations and circumstances the Bible says to say to the mountain so we can speak to negative situations and circumstances. Praise the Lord. Those with children, you can, you can just sit in front, at least for the time there. Yeah, that's all right. Are we blessed? Praise the name of the Lord. I hope those of you who are in ministry, the younger ones you are learning, when duty calls, leaders stand up. There is no ogre. You stand up, you move. Learn it. Praise the name of the Lord. So that you don't do ministry and sit down and no. When you are a leader, you are called to serve. It is the burden of service. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, no matter what happens in your life, always learn honor. This is a house of honor. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. You want to be able to have the privilege of living like our elderly ones, you must respect them. Please let her come. Mama, come and sit down. Don't say, I am a big man, I am rich. Keep all of that. These are spiritual principles. Honor your father and your mother in the Lord. The Bible says that it may, you may live long and that it may be well with you. This is not a teaching weekend. Otherwise, I'll, this is one of the reasons why it is not well with many young people. No matter how high you rise, no matter where you get to, never forget that these elderly people deserve your honor for life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Speak the word. How do you speak the word? To speak the word means to lift scripture and speak it over situations. Lift scripture from the Bible, not opinions. To speak the word does not mean to just talk empty talk. When Satan came to Jesus, Jesus would have said, Satan, I am not your mate. 
There's one song they used to sing as a devil I see near you. That's just a song. That's not scripture. You don't tell the devil, devil I see near you and he leaves. There is no record in scripture where that is a weapon of victory. You see, many times we are speaking. Look up, please. Let me have your attention. Many times we are speaking, but what we are saying is not scriptural. That's why it does not work. It's not just to open your mouth and say something. What you are saying, is it consistent with the word? Speak the word. So, let the weak say what? Let the poor say let those trusting God for a job declare that in the name of Jesus, favor is locating me. Based on scripture, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You see that? I have said before you life and death, and you declare, I choose life. As a man of God, you declare, I will never be frustrated in ministry. Because the Bible says the Lord walking with them, confirming the words with signs following. There's no barrenness in my hands. Because a command was given to me, be fruitful. And so I declare, according to God's word, I am fruitful. This is how to live. It's not what you do on Sunday. The just shall live by faith. And one of the major portion of the faith equation is speaking consistent with scripture, not consistent with feelings. A yeah, it's not fair. All those things only console you. They don't provide solutions. When Satan came to Jesus, he said, it, I've taught you, is written. He found Luke chapter 4, what was written concerning him, the messianic prophecy. Listen to me. You see why it is important to know the word? Because if you do not know the word, you will not know what to speak. What will you say? You can't speak the word in ignorance. My organs are functioning perfectly from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. As I grow in age, I grow in strength, I grow in wisdom. You must speak it and believe it. The favor of God is upon my life. I am like a well-watered garden. In the name of Jesus, my coming out is blessed. This is what you do when you wake up in the morning. It's not what you do when you are in trouble. If you speak only when you are in trouble, it's too late already. You send the words in the future like protocol to wait for you. You wake up in the morning as you are stretching. This is the day that the Lord has made. I decree and declare that I rejoice. It's God that made the day, not the devil. So God made the day factor in my interest. I decree and declare. I rejoice in the Lord always. Again I rejoice. Nothing annoys me. I live a life of joy and peace. I'm going to the office today. I decree and declare by the hand of God, favor is waiting for me. I go forth with joy and I am led forth with peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, a thousand fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand, none will harm me. While you are speaking, you will look like a fool until your life starts obeying you. You are a preacher in the name of Jesus. I'm going to church today. The Lord himself, Jesus is drawing as many who would receive the word, who will be planted in the house of God, who will grow. You are declaring it by the Spirit. This exam I'm about to write, in the name of Jesus, I have supernatural intelligence. There is a spirit in me, and the inspiration of the Almighty is able to make me of understanding. Oh, but where will your supplies come from? Your father has, has, has stopped taking care of you. Your mother is far. You are alone. No, I'm not alone. In the name of Jesus, for thou art with me. He says, goodness and mercy should follow me. How come I mean, I can't be alone? There are spirits following me. They are not just following me for nothing. Goodness is a spirit. Mercy is a spirit. You never get stranded when these spirits follow you. Hallelujah. 
you hear for instance that there is crisis somewhere the first thing you do before you begin the ministry of intercession is to declare in the name of Jesus Christ I'm part of the body of Christ I'm about to intercede for those who are hurting but for now I declare there is a wall of fire around me I am fortified supernaturally I never go where there is trouble my steps are ordered by the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ I am delivered from the scourging tongues of men no divination and no enchantment against me will prosper while you are saying this the realm of the spirit the angels are saying we hear you we have been commanded to manifest the things you are saying can I tell you this medical people will tell us that part of the primary assignment of depression is to bring you to a point of silence depression brings you to a point where you no longer can speak I don't know how this life is life is unfair they just sat me like that what kind of thing is this if life is unfair you make it fair by declaring the word are we together yes the name of the Lord is a strong tower I run into it and I am saved I declare that I'm supernaturally protected no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me it shall fall in judgment you are speaking that's your miracle service every day you get up in the morning and you are declaring and you step out and someone says I've been trying to reach you of course you have sent words already When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at work in him. The devil now says, what makes you believe that out of the 10,000 people that applied that job, you will get? Oh, the grace for honor is upon me. There is a grace that distinguishes me. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Yes. Learn to speak the word. Every believer is a talking spirit. This planet is voice activated. You activate possibilities in this kingdom through faith-filled speaking. Faith-filled speaking. When you begin to speak, it may look like nothing is happening yet. But listen to me, blessed people of God. Keep speaking. You are a man of God in the name of Jesus. One day the nations will honor the name of the Lord upon my life. I decree and declare. Though my beginning be small, I declare that my latter end. Though my beginning be small, my latter end shall surpass this beginning. While you are speaking it, you are having pictures of your village. Pictures of where you are coming from. Pictures of the fact that you cannot speak English very well. Pictures of the fact that you did not have the opportunity to go to a, a good school. You keep declaring by the Spirit of God and watch God honor you. Everybody says, speak the word. I'm going to give you one minute. It's part of the miracle service. I'd like you to begin to declare whilst you are sitting or standing, inside or outside. Once you can hear me, those following online, declare. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. The Lord is my light and my salvation. In the name of Jesus, kept by his word, lifted by his grace. My path is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter onto the perfect day. Don't be distracted. Everything I lay my hands to do is blessed. In the name of Jesus. When men say there is a casting down. I declare in Jesus name that there is a lifting. There is a rising up. In the name of Jesus. Premature death will never, never have its toll on my life. The fullness of my days I fulfill. I shall not be a victim of the arrows that fly by day, the noise of pestilence, the destruction that wasted in noonday. Are you speaking? Declare by the Spirit. Shut 
Fortified by the power of God. Fortified by the power of God. Fortified by the power of God. Fortified. Pray, pray. Don't look around. Fortified by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Declare by the Spirit. I refuse to be a victim. In the name of Jesus, I am victorious. Even by the Spirit of God, I am victorious. Even by the Spirit of God, I am victorious. Even by the Spirit of God. Every tree that has not been planted by God is uprooted from my life, uprooted from my destiny. Every tree that is not the planting of the Lord is uprooted from my life, uprooted from my destiny. Every tree that is not the planting of God, appearing as ill health, appearing as disease, is rooted from my life. I reject failure. I reject failure. I reject failure. In the name of Jesus Christ, my life is full of victory. I reject failure by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, the Word of God is lifting me. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything I do is blessed. Everything I do is blessed. Everything I do is blessed. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. In the name of Jesus, my going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God is working for me. It's producing supernatural results in my life. In the name of Jesus, I am a sign and a wonder by the power of the word. I am a sign and a wonder. I declare by the Spirit, I am a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. Declare over your children. Declare over your family. Declare over your job. Declare over your business. Declare over ministry. Declare over your finances. The wisdom of the Spirit is at work in me. In the name of Jesus, supernatural ideas, everything I lay my hands to do is blessed. I prosper. In the name of Jesus, I prosper. Even as my soul prospers, I am growing in the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Growing in the world. Growing in power. Growing in wisdom. Growing in leaps and bounds. Never a worse tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Don't be tired. It's part of the miracle service. You are declaring spiritual realities. You are commanding them to be. You are commanding them to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is how it works in this kingdom. You are in business. Get into your store. Close the place and begin to speak. In the name of Jesus, I call forth customers. I call forth helpers. I have put all. You are a ministry. You are a man of God. Don't sit down and let your ministry go down. Don't sit down and let the devil triumph over you. Go and lock that church. Only you inside. Or you and your prayer partners or prayer warriors. And begin to speak. In the name of Jesus, the spiritual gates of this church is open. Open to receive souls. Open to receive as many who will be changed. Who will be saved. Whether in Zaria or whatever nation, there are still enough people seeking Jesus. It's Bishop Oyedeko who will say, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. It's not a cliche, it's true. Don't keep 
quiet and then complain about what is happening to you. Never outgrow speaking the word. Never say, I am too big. Never outgrow speaking the word. Believe me, never outgrow speaking the word. Never, those who already have results are still doing it. Don't outgrow it. Never outgrow speaking the word. Every time you are faced with negative situations, before you start calling people who cannot help you, the first thing you do is make sure your voice is registered in the realm of the spirit. I'm coming out of this. You are in a financial situation in the name of Jesus. It will not have the best of me. The wisdom of God is at work in me. I'm coming out of this situation. How will your school fees come? How will your rent be paid? How will you complete the house? In the name of Jesus, one thing I know is that the wisdom of God is at work in me. The ministry of destiny help us at work in my life. Hallelujah. Listen, nobody is blessing you. Nobody is coming by God to help you. Everybody is leaving you to suffer alone. Don't keep quiet. You may not have money, but talk is. To pray is not, you don't need money to pray. Lock yourself in the name of Jesus. Father, I am not lazy. While I am trusting you to give me ideas that lift me, destiny helpers are real. I call them by the Spirit. You are praying faithful, provoking prayer. Many believers sit down and live defeated lives. And yes, scripture is here to guarantee your increase. For as long as I live, my mouth will not be silent over my destiny. I will speak. And what you speak must be scripture for it to work. If you speak what your tribal people believe, it will not work. If you speak what society says, it will not work. The voice of lamentation does not produce results. It is a word. Are we together? All of a sudden you sense that a pain is coming here and the devil starts lying to you. It's midlife crisis. Something is already beginning to happen. Oh, you are a man. Maybe prostrate cancer. Oh, you are a woman. Maybe something is happening. In the name of Jesus, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. My brother, my sister, if, if you don't begin to declare, don't wait when it's too late and you don't have the energy. In the name of Jesus, this body is prepared to serve the Lord. A body has thou prepared for me. Therefore, I declare that infirmity has no place to stay in my body in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural strength is working in me. You lay your hands on your mind. I am not dull. In the name of Jesus, understanding is at work in me. The spirit that gives understanding. Sometimes you can be confused as a leader, quite honestly. You don't know what to do. Do I go left or right? Instead of misleading people in pride, go to God. The Bible says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. Lord, there has to be a way out of this. There has to be a way out of this. I obtain grace. How will I pay the school fees of five children? And as it is right now, there is nothing in the bank. There has to be a way. I tap into the wisdom of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let me give us the fourth one. So number one, study and meditate on the Word. Number two, believe the word. Believe it. Number three, speak the word. Believe me. Speak the word. And then number four, obtain grace to obey the word to the latter. On the line to the latter. If you start and you stop, it's the same thing as not starting. You must obey to the latter. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Please pay attention. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. Give it to us media. Do we have a problem? It shall come to pass. Look up please. If thou shalt diligent, hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do. Someone say to do. Please say it again. To do. Speaking is important. But don't stop there. 
there are always conditions that are tied to the manifestation of victory through scripture you must find those conditions and obtain grace to do obtain grace to do obtain grace to do this is where the incomplete activity of faith has affected many people because most of us stop at speaking the moment you speak you say i'm all right no you are not all right no you are not all right when you speak the speaking sends the word to your future but there is always something to do i've taught you this i will keep teaching you this is how to make the word work for instance if you are a young man and you are trusting god for establishment you find scriptures that tell you you are blessed because you are the seed of abraham step one you believe it i am the seed of Abraham therefore what was will to Abraham through Christ has been given to me you have done well you believe it you speak it but if you stop there you will still struggle the Bible says, a diligent hand shall be made fat so you don't just stop by speaking and say I prosper and remain in the room waiting for money to come and meet you no in the name of Jesus I have ideas I obtain grace and you stand up by faith you apply for a job here and there. You write businesses here and there. Ah, what is the next step? Then the Holy Ghost speaks to you. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. With wise counsel, wage war. You go and meet someone who is succeeding. How can you help me to get out of this situation? You are taking a step that is committing God. But just speaking and saying, in the name of Jesus, I will not be poor. You may get trickles of blessings. One ten thousand, someone will send your destiny will need more than that. You see why many of us don't get results? Yes. You are a preacher in the name of Jesus. God is bringing me growth. God is bringing me increase. After speaking like that and you obtain grace, there must be a strategy that you invent by the Spirit for ingathering. Souls will not just come seated in there. The Holy Ghost and angels are ready there. But there has to be a system that you engage by the wisdom of God. And there are many systems for ingathering. The principal system for ingathering is signs and wonders. And then you can compel men and tell them, come see a man. That's what the woman did. How did the man in Gadara bring ten cities to Jesus? How did a prostitute without a Bible school gather people to come to Jesus? By word of mouth. That means word of mouth is powerful. When testimonies meet with verbal invitations, they will produce levels of ingathering beyond your imagination. That's how and why many of you are here today. Are we together? You are a father. You are trusting God to end this drought in your family. Okay? In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I receive wisdom. The times may seem hard, but I obtain grace. You cross your legs there. Your children, your wife, your family will suffer. And the Bible says if you cannot cater for your family, you have denied the faith and you are worse than an infidel. So what do you do? In the name of Jesus Christ, there has to be a way out. Good understanding procure favor the way of the transgressor is hard i don't have money but what is the cheapest spiritual currency i can begin to build relationships if you don't have money you should have relationships somebody should love you and like you or love your wife and children enough to say not when i'm alive i will never allow you beg for bread i can't say i will give you a house and cars but i will make sure if it's food at least you can eat while you think if you don't have money and you don't have relationships, you are already on your way to die. Money is not everything. Believers learn this. Money is not everything. Many of us would throw away God, throw away the Holy Spirit, throw away valuable people because of money. Are we learning? Everybody say obedience. Two more scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. The Bible says, and having the readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is complete, perfected, or fulfilled. You don't have the right to judge disobedience and the spirit that works in sons of disobedience until your obedience is complete. Everybody say complete obedience. John 13 and verse 17. John chapter 13. And verse 17 is projected. If you can see it, let's read together. Ready? One to read. If 
ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them. There are many believers who don't do the word. Turn to the book of this verse, this, they will help you complete it. But there are no results in their lives because they are not doers. It's important to believe of the heart. It's important to verbalize you speak. But it's also important to obtain grace to do. To do. You want the anointing in your life. You study from scripture. What are some of the keys that control the manifestation of the anointing and the miraculous? The word of God backed up by prayer and fasting. Building in the secret place. Spending time with God. Is that true? Just knowing it and you stop there. And you say now I know. I will be anointed. No. You have to now do and engage. When you spend the hours alone with God. Building your spirit. Then you will find out that God will make good. What he said. Now tonight we have come here for a miracle service. Look up please. What is a miracle service? It's a service of signs and wonders. Primarily, what do you expect in a miracle service? Number one, you expect salvation. It is important that men be saved. It is impossible to not have one person in this place inside and those outside and those following online who is not willing to give his life to Jesus because in the days of your power the people shall be willing number two what happens in a miracle service all kinds of miracles as much as your faith can receive healing miracles miracles of transformation miracles of deliverance from demonic influences spirits that tie the lives and the destinies of men restoration prophetic interventions impartations of grace so if we call tonight a miracle service it's important that you release your heart the rain notwithstanding the rain should not interrupt you at all open up your heart that within the few minutes we have you see, I may not be able to pray for people now because we are congested here, but we are going to pray. There are things God can begin to settle in your life. And as I give you those prayer points, please pray passionately. Don't be distracted. The power of God is here. You can sit down if you want. You can stand if you want, but make sure you pray. Is that true? We are going to pray restoration. Many of us have lost things in our lives. Listen, many of us have lost opportunities. Many of us have lost certain levels of graces. Many of us have lost destiny helpers. You are going to lift your voice to heaven and cry the prayer of restoration. Are you ready? Say, Father. One more time. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, restore to my life restore to my destiny restore to my family restore in my body everything missing everything lost open your mouth and begin to pray everything lost let there be restoration restore in the name of Jesus Restore. Restore time, O God. Restore things, O God. Restore time, O God. Restore things, O God. Are you praying restoration? Some of you have lost money. Some of you have lost grace in your life. Restore. I declare restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare restoration in the name of Jesus. Restoration in my body. Restoration according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. Restoration in ministry. Restoration of opportunity. Restoration of opportunity. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we declare restoration. We 
Exodus chapter 14 from verse 13. We are praying. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall not see them no more forever. Listen, hold on. Just go back to 13. Go back to 13. We are going to declare. There are things you should see every day. The goodness of God. The mercy of God. But there are things you should never see. Failure, disappointment. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Failure. Failure. Disappointment. Disappointment. Shame. Shame. Reproach. Reproach. Everything that is antichrist. I declare. Be banished from my sight and from my life. Lift your voice and pray. This Egyptian I see today in the name of Jesus. I see them no more and forever. This Egyptian I see today. I see them no more and forever. This Egyptian I see today. I see them no more and forever. This Egyptian I see today. I see them no more. Egyptians of sickness, Egyptians of shame, Egyptians of reproach. I cross you by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus, out of my sight and out of my destiny. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Verse 14. Same Exodus. The Lord will fight for you. Hear me? It matters who fights for you. It matters who fights for you. Are we together? The Bible talks about not being able to step into a house and spoil the house except you bind the strong man. And it has to be one who is stronger than the strong man who binds him. Are you ready to pray? The Bible says the Lord fights for you. God is a warrior. He can fight for men. Listen, there are situations, some of you are here. What is, you may not have sickness in your body, but what is plaguing you, only God can fight it. Hear me? There are battles that are not for you. You don't have that power. Your job is to invite God into it and step back. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, arise as a mighty warrior. Fight for me. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Please be serious. Please be serious. Pray. Fight for me. Fight for me. In the name of Jesus. This battle attempted to destroy my family. Fight for me. Fight for me. Give me peace. Fight for me. This battle over my health. Fight for me. This battle over the ministry. Fight for me. Someone is praying. Fight for me, fight for me, fight for me, fight for my family, fight for the ministry, fight for my finances, fight for my children. In the name of Jesus, arise, O God, arise, O God, arise, O God, arise, O God, fight for me, fight for me. Fight for me. Your 
In the name of Jesus. Verse 15. Ah, this is for someone. And the Lord said, since you have asked me to fight for you, let me tell you what happens when I fight for you. He says, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Listen, listen, listen. Your children represent anything and anyone under your care. Your body is under your care. It falls into that category. Your finance is under your care. Are you ready to speak? He tells you the command. Go! Not backward. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. To my destiny, to my, to destiny, my body, to my, body, to my family, to my, family, to my children, to my, children, to my, job, to my job, to ministry, to ministry. Hear, the word of the hear the word of the Lord. Go forward. forward. Lift your voice and declare. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Every family here. Help them, please. Help those under the anointing. Go forward. Prophesy. Go Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, spiritually, go forward, mentally, go forward, academically, go forward, go forward. No more delay. No more delay. I go forward. No more delay. I go forward as a man of God. Go forward as a businessman. Go forward as a student. Go forward as a family man. Go forward in your career. Go forward. Are you praying? This is a miracle service. I go forward. I reject that nation. Oh God, hear the word of the Lord. I go forward. Oh God, hear the word of the Lord. I go forward. September, hear the word of the Lord. I go forward. October, I go forward. November, I go forward. December, I go forward. 2021, hear the word of the Lord. I go forward. My God, this will be one miracle service you will not forget. Believe me, you may not know what is being created in your destiny. Fire is burning here. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. Because now we have prayed to go forward. But for many of us, there is a reason why you may not go forward. Fear. Fear. Fear of the Red Sea. Fear. Fear. No one in my family has done this before. Fear. 
mean I can do a PhD? No one in my family has done it before. Fear. You mean I can be a kingdom financier? I came from a background where nobody has risen. I can have children that glorify God. Fear. Look up. The Bible says, For God had not given Joshua Selman the spirit of fear. I've taught you this that fear is a gift. Someone gives it and someone receives it. Anything receivable can be rejected. But of power and of love and of the sound mind. Please, this prayer, pray it radically and with passion. Listen, listen. Many of us, if you had conquered fear, you will not be at this level now. Fear. Fear to build a house. Fear to step out of your parents' house and begin to live responsibly. Fear. Every time God speaks, you chicken out. Fear. God has not given you. House of God, hear me. He has not given you the spirit of fear. So if you find it in your life, you receive it from someone else. Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have not given me, you have not, not given me the spirit of fear. The spirit spirit of of fear. fear. Therefore, therefore, I decree and declare, decree and declare every manifestation, every manifestation of, fear of fear in my life, in my, life, in my, mind, in my mind, in my destiny. In my destiny. I cast you now. You lift your voice and pray. Fear, fear of the future. Fear of the past. Fear of tomorrow. Fear of remaining alive. Fear of living in this covenant time. In the name of Jesus, I cast out fear. I cast out fear. I cast out fear. I cast out fear. Is someone praying? I reject the spirit of fear. a miracle service. I sense in my spirit that God knows why he organized this time of prayer. There is something that is happening. Believe me. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Give us verse 
11 and 12 we we'll start from verse 11 put on the whole armor now pay attention we are praying a serious prayer now put on the whole armor of God it's risky to put back put on the whole armor of God I have a series on this that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There is something called the wiles, the arsenals, the weaponry of Satan. That the cure for being hit by the weapons of Satan is put on how many? Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh. Kaduna State. Plateau State, North Nigeria, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. More than men that fight the purposes of God, there are principalities, there are powers, there are rulers of the darkness of this world. There is spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Are you ready to pray? We are going to declare. We are going to step into five minutes of prophetic intercession. Bring the entire middle belt. Bring this country and say in the name of Jesus, Father, fire suffer from the heaven. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. We pray for Plato State. We pray for Kaduna State. We pray for Daria. We pray for the middle belt. By the blood of the Lamb, we decree and declare spirits hovering around this territory, sucking the blood of men and eating the flesh of God's creation. The Lord rebuke you. 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 We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Principalities, powers, spirits over territories. We come against you by the blood of the Lamb. We come against you by the blood of the eternal covenant. In the name of Jesus. We come against you by the blood of the Lamb. We come against you in the name of Jesus. We come against you by the power of the Holy Ghost. We come against you in the name of Jesus hear me hear me please listen to me we have a responsibility as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to pray and reorder things they use divination in the day of Esther to find out what day they will attack the Jews there must be an alignment of the consolations and the elements of creation. But all of the elements of creation were put together for man's victory. Are we together? Yes. You are going to pray. We are going to call forth a, the ministry of angels. Are they not ministering spirits? Who to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. We call for the angels. The ministry of angels. Angelic ministry. In the name of Jesus. The ministry of angels. 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 The ministry of angels.
of angels at home. The ministry of angels over every home. Over every home, over every region, Hallelujah. Now listen, please. Listen. I'm sure the weather should be a bit calm now. Soon, would 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 not would not stay here necessarily long. Let's take the last one or two prayer points. You're going to pray for your family now. Hear me? Take what I'm telling you seriously. So that you do not go out and come back and hear that you are the only one who is alive, who is left. You're going to pray. He says, when I see the blood, there is the mystery of the blood. He said, Moses, an angel of death is about to pass. But you get the blood. Don't put it on your lintel. He says, if I see the blood, I will pass. Over. So, are you ready to place the blood okay, 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 upon okay. yourself and your loved ones? Yes. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over, my life, over my life, over my family, over my, over my, my children. Oh, death, oh, Wester, you have no place you have no in my home. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Rebuke the Wester. The West are comes as incurable diseases. The West are comes as external attacks. Rebuke the West. Oh West, there is a blood upon the lintel of my destiny, upon the lintel of my home. Every waste of life, of potentials, every waste by the blood of the eternal covenant, but we are covered, covered in the morning, covered in the afternoon, covered in the night, covered in my going out, covered in my coming in. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please look up. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the security operatives. You see, in truth, the horse is prepared for battle, but safety is of the Lord. It takes the wisdom of God to direct them to know what to do. Abba, we have to pray. Oh. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, give our security operatives give our security wisdom, 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 insight, insight, both technical, both technical and spiritual, and spiritual, to be able to establish peace to over to our peace territory. Over Lift territory. your voice and pray. Wisdom, insight, wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Last prayer point. You are going to pray for yourself. Death is a spirit. Untimely death is a spirit. The assignment of untimely death is to cut short your life and your destiny. Please listen to me. There are times where people finish their assignment with nobility and honor. And they transit with honor. The Bible calls it sleeping with the fathers. Hear me. For believers, 
The Bible does not say we die. The Bible says we sleep. And they that sleep, sleep in the night. Is that true? When you lie down in the afternoon, it's, it's called siesta. You sleep for one hour and stand up. Believers don't die. Believers sleep. And we sleep in the night. Not in the morning. Not in the brightness of the afternoon. Listen to me. You are going to pray. Don't fear death. I know for many of you, you may have lost loved ones. It's all right. But there is this growing fear. Oh, pastors are dying. Businessmen are dying. Those who love the Lord are dying. Prayer warriors are dying. And the devil can say, what makes you think you will stand? This is it. Fear. Death is a terrorist. Until you are bold enough to confront the spirit of death. One day it will sweep you just like that. Hear me? We don't fight death because we are afraid. There is already victory in the life here. And even in the life to come. But that you need to live to finish your assignment. There are many people who have gone today and left trouble behind. Children, no, look at people just get scared. Small headache and someone tells you, you go online to read something and he said, these are the signs. Nine out of every ten. Please, you are going to pray for yourself. I don't know about you, but I must finish my course. I must finish my course in the name of... This is not a corporate thing. This is an individual thing. Lift your voice and declare. I shall not die. But leave. And declare the word of the Lord. I rebuke the spirit of death. I speak life. Life. Longevity. The fullness of my faith. I fulfill. Are you speaking? Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. I reject that in the name of Jesus Christ. The fullness of my days I receive. The fullness of my destiny I see. I live out my destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. My God shall supply all my needs According to His riches in glory He will put His angels charge over me Jehovah Jireh cares for me Jehovah Jireh cares for me Jehovah Jireh cares for me let your spirit hear you say, Five more times. This is the basis of our confidence. So we do not weep because the book is open. Now I want to pray for you. Now listen, here's how we're going to do it. Um or I think what we'll do is how many of you have your prayer requests here this is what we'll do just bring out your prayer request our ushers be our just you can pass it to the last person let's have it here so that when I pray for you we may not have people come out because the place is jam packed so whoever is under the anointing right where you are you will help them just where you are but please write if you still want a few minutes to quickly write your prayer request please sit down if you have any medical condition sit down Generally, just sit down. Please.
just one minute so you write it very quickly. You can help the ushers collect and just pass it to them. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He will put his angels charge over me. God will give you a testimony in this miracle service. And you will never forget that you came here in the presence of God. Now, while they are collecting the prayer request, let me just direct you on what you are going to do. Listen, please pay attention. When we collect it, we'll have it here. I'm going to be ministering deliverance and ministering healing all at once. Here's what I want you to do for me, please. If anyone is under the anointing close to you, you don't have to bring them out because we are jam-packed. Just help them and guide them. Let me do the prayer. And then for the sick, we may not have the time to take testimonies. It's already time. Thank God for the rain. You are not going anywhere. We'll wait here. We'll pray. And then I'll teach. Once the rain is calm, we'll be ready to go. But please, don't waste this time. God is already making it a most profitable time. A most profitable time of prayer. Please submit the prayer request very quickly. Those following online, you can submit it by way of um, our social media platforms. You may want to suspend this for a while. The fan is interrupting this. Just shift it or take it back or just suspend it for a while so we can have the request here. Have the faith to write what must live your life. Don't say I wrote it before. If it's still here, write it again. Write it till it leaves. Force it to live by faith. Write it till it leaves. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just take it back. You don't have to off it. We still need it. Just take it back. That's all. Hallelujah. Help the lady who shouts now under the anointing. I thought we'll have to collect this, but the Spirit of God is already moving. Whether you are an usher or not, just help her. Just help her. Help her. In the name of Jesus, God is already bringing deliverance. This lady wearing green, this one standing, I just saw light, and the Lord is visiting both her and her family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I don't know who she is, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. No, 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 don't worry. You don't have, just help them. We can we may not be able to shift people up and down. Whoever is there, you can help the ushers. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing a name, Justina. Who is Justina? You are Justina, Mama. Please stand up. Please stand up. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just focus on submitting your prayer request and then pay attention and let the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are many families here that need to be delivered from oppression. I don't know how it will happen, but the rain will not stop us. We must pray it. We must pray that fire must fall upon the people that need to be delivered. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone you came here. You've been married two years. No issue. No fruit of the womb. Who is that? Two years. I'm not saying if you need a child. I'm just saying exactly. Let's just work with what God is saying. Are you here alone? Is your wife here? Come. Hold. Careful, careful. Don't, don't. Let's be orderly. Let's be orderly. God is helping us. Let's celebrate Jesus for them. Come. Mama, just a moment, I'll pray with you. Let me just... Are you married? 
I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? Don't cry. Taraba. Don't cry. Huh? Taraba. You came from Taraba. Oh my God. How about you, sir? Katina. Katina. Judge. You came from Judge. You came from Abuja. Two years. You are trusting God. Look at me. There is power in the name of Jesus. I assure you, there is power in the name of Jesus. Animals don't attend a miracle service, and yet God Himself, in His mercy, brings fruitfulness. Every act of unfruitfulness is an attack from hell. It doesn't matter what medical form and expression it comes under. And for God to have located you, I want to speak. Stand in faith, believing that God will bring it to an end, and that you stand on this altar and still testify of that fruitfulness. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare right now everything stopping fruitfulness. I don't care how long, two years. Sir, the power of God is coming on you. I'm seeing something like light in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, let it be over right now. For you and your wife, I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, what's your name? Huh? Rachel. I'm Rachel. Kwaba, is it Kwaba? What's your name? Wama. Wama. Yes, sir. Let me pray for you. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's at the barrack. He's at work. He's a military man. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. I'm not a prophet of doom. But in the name of Jesus, it will never be said your husband has gone to glory and left you alone. Amen. You see what I'm telling you? Which barrack? Um, enemies. Depot, Nigeria. Depot. Yes, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cancel this that you have shown me. We declare for the sake of your mercy, preserve our husband. And any power fighting your husband to bring him to the grave, in the name of Jesus, we silence that power now. I decree and declare right now, it's time for you to celebrate fruitfulness. Receive that grace. My sister, receive that grace. My brother, receive that grace. You will return with your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I want to pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, please stand up, man. The Lord is bringing favor for you. Supernatural favor by the Spirit. The Lord is saying, I should tell you not to worry. Worry will increase your BP. But the Lord is stepping in for you. He's bringing a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord do this miracle. He will give you this great miracle. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing someone... You've been having pain. This looks like appendicitis. This is pain around your right. I'm feeling that pain now around my right. Please, you may need to turn this fan our direction. And we need the fan. Just shift it backwards and turn so that we can have it. What's your name, my dear? Huh? Josephine. Josephine. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? How long has this been? Since I lost my brother. Josephine. When did you lose your brother? Um, June, June 18. In the name of Jesus Christ, just lay your hands, all of you standing here, lay your hands. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything manifesting as appendicitis, now, let them go by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing fire just move across you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life by the Spirit of the living God. I call, my God, my God. I'm, I'm seeing fire. That's just what I'm seeing. Let there be healing right now. Be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Help them by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every demon of darkness manifesting as appendicitis or every lower abdominal problem. I come against it in the name of Jesus. 
let there be a miracle for you be healed right now in jesus name hallelujah now i'm going to pray i'm going to rebuke spirits please just help those who begin to manifest something is living that lady i cost that devil the lady wearing that cap satan lose her now I just saw like a spirit. I command you release our destiny now. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Release our destiny now. Can I pray for you now? I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Those outside, I know you can still hear me. All the overflows, as many who can hear, and following online. Let's pay attention. Right now I decree and declare. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Everyone here who is under the influence of any spirit. You don't have to bring them out. Just hold them where they are. Right now I decree. Any spirit that has gained access to your destiny. The Bible says they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. As you shout that name that is above every other name, I command that spirit to let you go once and for all. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I command that devil to go now. I command every foul spirit. Release their destinies now. In the name of Jesus. Just help those under the anointing. Let the fire from heaven, right now in Jesus' name, every spirit shine down to destiny. Be released from every east from the front to the back, inside, outside. Be delivered now. Help them, please. Be delivered now. Now listen to me, help that lady. Any family here that is corporately under siege, not just one person, everybody in the family is under a yoke and a pattern. Nobody moves forward. Right now, may fire may fire from heaven fall right now. May fire from heaven fall right now. May fire from heaven fall upon that family. Help them, please. Fall from heaven. I release every family. Family from witchcraft, I release every family, every cause, every yoke, every cause, every yoke be delivered now. Help them, please. Every cause. There are families, there are ordinances on their head. You move is following you. You travel is following you. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying again. I'm seeing fire and I'm seeing the number 23. There are 23 people. This deliverance fire is coming on. Right now, one, two, three. Take that fire. Help them, please. Take that fire. Take that fire. Be delivered. Everything following you. That is not of God, I command it to leave you now. Everything following Apakatosiata, following you, I command it to let you go now. I want to pray for you. It matters what follows you. There are people with negative cycles that follow them. You are sincere people. A man had an ugly situation, even though he was sitting at a gate called beautiful. I want to pray for you. If what is on you is negative, nothing good will really come into your hands. I'm telling you this, no matter how diligent you are. Again, I'm praying, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, if there is any covenant that you have with ancestry, covenants with bloodline, some of you, where you come from, the devil is taking advantage of it. Some of you, covenants your parents made, they worship idols, and right now those idols will not rest you left. But at the count of three, Every ordinance right now be delivered. One, two, three. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Every spirit of idol worship following you. All that that are serving by bloodline that will not let you go. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Now. Hey, 
Kaila Mashala Kosa Sia Kata Pranda Gatibala. I'm still seeing this altar thing I'm talking about. I'm still seeing altar. The Lord is still telling me to pray. Hear me, hear me, hold on. There are many of you, you may not believe it, but there are altars have a voice in the spirit. They can speak and they will not live by default. You have to engage the blood for freedom. This is why many bad luck, this thing you see called bad luck, bad luck has a root. Just because you are not in your village does not mean you are free from it. Bad luck has a root. I'm praying for you now. In the name of Jesus, anyone who has been going through negative cycles, negative patterns, empowered by altars, as you shout this name, Jesus, may fire from heaven come upon you. At the count of three, one, two, three. Hallelujah. Hear me. There are people that never finish anything they start. It's a spirit that you start things and never finish. If it's a house, it never finishes. If it's a project, it never finishes. Anything you start never finishes. I want to pray for you. We have to rebuke that thing. I declare, my God, I'm already seeing the power of God touching people. Some of you, it's not just you. It's your entire family. In the name of Jesus, help that, help that lady, help that lady. Every spirit that starts and never finishes by the power of the Holy Ghost that starts and never finishes. Right now, be delivered in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Pay attention, the Lord is ministering to us. I want to rebuke repetitive patterns. Look up, please. Look up, please. My God, there's fire burning here. Repetitive patterns. You come and share a dream with your brother or your father and they say, I had the same dream. I saw what you saw. I saw what you saw also. What appeared to you also appeared to me. Just when your father was going abroad, something brought him down. And now it's beginning to happen to you. I want to break the power of patterns. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are men and women here. Patterns have followed them. Wrong marriages. Pattern, childlessness. Pattern, men feed the. I mean, women feed the men. I declare every wrong pattern. Fire comes upon you now. At the count of three, one, two, three. I break those patterns. I break those patterns. I break those patterns. Sir, please, where are you coming from? From Yola. Yola. I want to pray for you, sir. I hope you are not embarrassed that I pray for you. Because this prayer I prayed, the Lord is asking me to set you free from it. Amen. I'm seeing, please stand up. I'm seeing these patterns. You are a good man. You see, let me tell you this. Do you know something can happen and you were not there? Yet, if this pattern is at work, you will repeat the same thing. Same thing. There are people who, when they get to final year, something happens to them. You trace it, they will tell you it was a pattern that happened somewhere. Just when someone says, I love you, I want to go and see your parents, those spirits come again. Patterns. 
just when you want to say I'm a man of God many of you your parents will tell you I had the call of God on my life just when they wanted to answer it they either died or they went down now that call has shifted to you and the pattern is still haunting you in the name of Jesus there are glorious destinies here that have been tied down tied down Mani shosa sikete baraka toska di pradia keleke te baraka toska te baraka eshe ke paruso so poska di kata engre te kate baraka toska di ata. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Every pattern that is bringing down your destiny, not allowing the glory of your destiny to be open. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command those patterns to be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Sir, hold my hands. I don't know you. Look at me. What do you do? Contract. You're into contracts. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. Yes. Two months. Two months. Yes. Sixty days. Your life will change in a way that will surprise you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. By the God of heaven, I pray for you. Hold my hands. A symbol of your productivity as God has instructed me to do. I declare be shifted to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. You will never, never be the same. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help the man please. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a very serious vision. The Lord is asking me to pray for ABU. Amadou Bello University. Because I'm seeing them sack a few lecturers. And I'm wondering what is happening now. And this thing is programmed by the spirit of a born woman. Hear what I'm saying. I will not tell you what God is not saying. I'm seeing a massive just for flimsy excuses in the name of whatever. They are just throwing believers out. Just like that. And the Lord is saying we should pray. Pray is important to Don't say it does not concern me. My father is not a lecturer. Please pray. Can we, can we just respond to that? I just saw this vision now. Please pray in one minute. Father, let the church stand. Let the church stand. In the name of Jesus. If you hear the word of the Lord, by extension, every institution of learning within this city, Lord, protect, protect the heritage of your people. Protect and defend your people. May their interests be defended. In the name of Jesus. 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 Arise in defense of your people. 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 Hallelujah. Now, was he praying? I'd like you to pray for every lecturer. But especially those who name the name of the Lord. Lord, keep them for the sake of your church. Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute. Lord, keep them. Lecturer, staff, academic, non-academic staff. I'd like you to pray. Lord, keep them for the sake of your name. For the sake of the church. Keep them. Keep them. Keep them. Are you praying? Keep them. Keep them. Hallelujah. Now look up, please. Before I start praying for the sick, I want us to pray against the spirit of infirmity. It is not only through terrorism the devil wants to end the life of believers. I've not shared this vision with anyone. I just saw something that looked like organ failure, just like that. And I saw it killing many, many people. Like someone's organ just packs up. And people started researching and saying, what could be the problem? No symptoms. So maybe like starting, growing, growing. And people were saying, it's, it's a variation of cancer. 
that it, we have a lot of doctors here. You know, not that something that starts, it has a history, you see it growing and evolving. Something can come and like within one month, just kill somebody. Either the lungs stop working, or this, they will trace it. People will say water, other people will say this and that, other ones will say food. Whatever it is, we are going to pray. Listen, this body is the only body you have. You are not given two bodies on earth. It's only one. And you are going to pray for yourself and pray for the church. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Whether the young or the old, listen, go to Shika here. We have doctors here. Go to Shika here or any hospital and see the number of cases that don't have a name. The doctors will test, is it cancer? It's not cancer. What kind of growth is it? We don't know. Ladies, pray. Your body is not a place for growth. And then, respectfully speaking, don't feel bad. But we have to pray especially for the men. This widespread manifestation of what we call prostate cancer is a demon. It's a demon. I'm telling you this by God. It's a demon. Are we together now? I'm not planting fear in you. And what you tolerate, you will never change. We are ready to pray. The spirit of infirmity, not my body. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, we rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Every mysterious sickness. Every mysterious sickness. Incurable diseases. Manifesting as devils in the bodies of believers. Oh, we enjoy health and soundness. We enjoy health and soundness. We enjoy health and soundness in the name of Jesus. Mention the organs in your body and declare that they are functioning optimally in the name of Jesus Christ. Functioning optimally by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Now look up. Having said that, let me put a disclaimer before I begin to pray for the sick. Medical science tells us that most diseases, if the people were careful to have detected them, would have been managed. Is that true? I can tell you this. Many believers are careless. Someone can feel a growth and ignore it there for 10 years only to find out that if it was seen and managed, we are men of faith, but we do not ignore medicine. Medicine is not a cause. It's, it's, doctors are instruments of God's mercy. There are many believers that God would have easily used people to manage different conditions in our lives, but carelessness. So while we are praying for this, some of you may need to help your parents so that they will help you eventually. Because you see, there is a way that your loved ones can be so sick. Every money you have saved for everything, the whole finances of your destiny will sink in. And after everything, they will still pass on. Now you will be happy that they went to heaven. But what you are left with, death and trouble. Second Kings, you see the story that happened. The wife of the sons of the prophet. When he died, he left the children in debt. They gave his future as collateral. Are we paying attention now? So while God is helping us to be, there is nothing wrong in going to the hospital. When you find out, thank God for the kind of visionary, Holy Ghost, tongue-talking doctors that God is raising all over the globe. Because there are times that when they look at this, they know that this is not just a medical condition. This is a spirit. There are times they use injection. There are times they use their hand. You see that now. 
I'm saying this because for as long as believers continue to be careless, believe me when I tell you Satan wants to depopulate believers. Terrorism is only one angle of the thing. If you just look at terrorism, no, that's not the only thing. One of the major plagues that the devil wants to bring is mysterious sicknesses. You just hear that this person has died. What happened? Oh, heart failure. What happened? My head, my head. What happened? This one is there. If it was detected early. So we're going to pray for sensitivity. 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 And the unashamedness to know when to deal with these things squarely. You are praying and then the doctors are helping you. Are we together? But as for those who have come here now trusting God, we are going to pray for the sick. Unfortunately, we may not have the time to bring them out. But I want to pray for you right now. I believe in healing. Please lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Where you are trusting God for a miracle. Where you are trusting God for a miracle. Just lay your hands. I want to pray for you now. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 23 Matthew chapter 4 lay your hands there and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Lay your hands there. I'm praying for you now. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. If you are standing for someone, I'm seeing some of you holding photos, your phones, maybe some of your loved ones are connecting. Don't worry. We are praying. Father, you gave us the power to heal the sick. The power to deliver the oppressed. The Bible declares how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about healing all day that were oppressed, doing good and healing all day that were oppressed. For God was with him right now in the name of Jesus. Just lay your hands there. Something Jesus, every sickness and every infirmity, every spirit that is at the back of any disease and any sickness, I come in the name of Jesus who is the healer. I come in the name of Jesus who is the restorer. My God, such power is moving in this place. Right now I decree and declare that every spirit that is not of the Christ, afflicting God's people, leave their bodies now. In the name of Jesus, leave their bodies now. In the name of Jesus, lose your hold now. Keep your hands there. Right now I decree and declare, from the crown of your head, my God, 
I'm just feeling it even on my own body. I'm just feeling like just like a, a sensation. Help this woman. Mama, the power of God is touching you. I'm seeing healing. I don't know what it is. This is our mother. There is a miracle happening to you right now. This is witchcraft wanting to send you to your grave. But I bring you healing. Be healed now. Help them. Be healed now. Be healed now. My God, Jesus is healing. Be healed now. Headaches. Headaches with no explanation. Migraines and all sorts. Be healed now. My God. Every chest condition. Every chest condition. Right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be healed now. Be healed now. The Lord is healing bone conditions. In the name of Jesus. Some of you may not be a fracture or your leg, but just you have problems of all sorts with your bones. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Every eye condition here, whether complete blindness, partial blindness, glaucoma, cataract, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the power of God touch you right now. Let the power of God touch you right now. Peptic ulcer. God is healing ulcers. Not just peptic ulcer, but all kinds of ulcers. The Lord is showing me someone you have a wound. A serious wound that would not heal. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me that there are a number of people here who have diabetes. Some do not even know. In the name of Jesus, anyone here suffering sugar diabetes, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be healing for you now. Let there be healing for you now. Let there be healing for you now. Now hear me. Every lump, every growth, everything that was not in your body when they gave birth to you, manifesting as lumps, breast lump, lumps around your neck, lumps around your hand, lumps around various parts of your body. I'm telling you something is happening right now. I'm just feeling fire on my hands. In the name of Jesus, Jesus is touching those bodies now. Jesus is touching those bodies now. Just help them, help those under the anointing. Now every lump, every growth, fibroids, every devilish growth, disappear from those bodies now. Disappear from those bodies now. Disappear from those bodies now. I'm seeing someone's feet, just your feet, the back of your feet is hot. Sometimes you feel as if there is fire, as if you are matching fire, like your nerve endings, your feet. I'm seeing that the power of God is touching you right now. Wherever you are, be healed now. If there is anyone here with any heart condition, you don't breathe well, you have a hole in your heart, there is any demonic thing around your heart, in the name of Jesus, help that lady please, by the power of the Holy Spirit, help her. The Lord is just asking me to pray in the spirit. There are people he's touching. Sadima la kush kade brende ke diaba. Shkada barente skade berezo siadas. Ingrete ke paras kada balakush kade beleto sezia. Neketesh, neketesh, neketesh. Karata skada bada. Branda kata parus kade beleko tas kade bria. Ebreke te sosia senekete bronda skada balahaskia. He's bringing you healing, life, life to that body. Life to that body in the name of Jesus Christ. Life to that body inside, outside. Life to that body. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's this thing that makes the cheek swell. What do they call it? There's someone, you don't have mums, but that is the condition. It's like I'm seeing one side of your face beginning to swell like someone who has that condition. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are right now, the power of Jesus, help them. The power of Jesus is touching you right now. Let there be healing for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to pray for someone. Um, what is the condition where someone doesn't have insufficient blood in their body? This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing at least three people. It's like there is, I'm seeing like a spirit that drains your blood. No matter what happens, they will always find out that you don't have enough blood. You don't have any hemorrhage or anything but blood just depletes from your body. Right now, the power of God, I'm three people, the Lord is showing me. Just be patient, we'll soon be done. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are, but Lord Jesus, wherever they are, inside, outside, every spirit that is leaking away your blood and bringing you in this unfortunate condition, right now be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. The Lord has showed me a woman. You don't have to come out and pray for you. You have been having many miscarriages. Every time you have a miscarriage, second month, third month, a spirit appears to you and tries to sleep with you. And when that happens, the next thing you find out that you've lost that pregnancy. This has happened many times. Not four, not five, not six. And the Lord is revealing to me that he wants to bring a miracle to that family right now. I don't know who that person is. Whether you are outside, you are inside, or you are following online. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, every association and every relationship you have with any other spirit outside of the Holy Spirit, I declare, be both delivered and healed now. Be delivered and healed now. The Lord is healing. I'm seeing at least two people. Um, don't be embarrassed. I'm not asking you to come out. This thing they call mouth odor. Very pungent, oozing smell comes out of your mouth. It may not necessarily be because you are careless. Like your breath is very, very bad. Very bad. A few people have told you that it's, it's more than just bad breath. This is a product of many things. In the name of Jesus, here at this miracle service, the power of God is touching you. I bring you healing right now. Rheumatoid arthritis of all sorts, whether in its infancy or advanced stage, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've seen this case before and I've announced it here in Koinonia. But the Lord is asking that I should pray again. A woman who is not, is not a nursing mother but is lactating. You are not, it's not like you gave birth to a child. But yet it looks like you are lactating. In the name of Jesus, whoever is in, on having that kind of condition, I don't know whether it's hormonal or demonic or both, whatever be the case, we cancel it now. Help them. We cancel it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cancel it now. There's someone that has breathing problem. In fact, from what God is showing me, you thought you had COVID. Because you have till now. This has happened for a long time. Sometimes you have to sit down and use your mouth to breathe. Because breathing through your nose is almost as if you are gasping for breath. As if you are going to die. I'm not talking of some being pressed in, in the spirit or in a dream. Physically, sometimes it's as if the room does not have oxygen again. I want to pray for you. I don't know what the condition is. But in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. And I declare right now. Jesus is touching you, bringing you life, bringing you healing, bringing you life, bringing you healing. All those 
those who are holding the photos of loved ones or any point of contact in the name of Jesus I may not know what ails them but in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be a supernatural miracle right now let there be healing miracles for them right now whether I mention your case or not every situation that you have that is a disease or a sickness that you came here on this ground with or you are following online in the name of Jesus Christ I bring you life and I bring you healing right now be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus you will go back and check yourself and find out that the only thing left is vitality in your body in Jesus name I pray now hear me make it a point of duty to always return thanks in testimonies we may not have the time some of you who have been under the anointing all kinds of mighty miracles and manifestations happen and sometimes some of you may need to go back and check with doctors to ascertain we don't lie we don't fake any miracle here everything that happens here we ascertain that it's been verified even medically so do well to check yourself and you can always it doesn't have to be on Friday you find out there's a miracle you can reach the PR department or the media and let them know and they can register you for a testimony here whether here or um, Abuja or any other place at all just make sure that believers know what has happened to you in the name of Jesus are you ready to pray over the request please stretch your hands stretch your hands stretch your hands and I want you to decree and declare go ahead and begin to pray you don't have to kneel please don't kneel you stand let me do the kneeling in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands and begin to declare these Egyptians I see today I see them no more forever I see them no more forever in the name of Jesus Christ I see them no more forever Lord we declare we decree by the power that raised Christ from the dead please pray you are speaking by the spirit everything that has been dropped here on this altar let it turn into a testimony let it turn into a testimony we declare by the spirit of God we declare by the hand of God we declare by the power of God supernatural visitations Lord turn situations around turn situations around turn situations around in the name of Jesus turn situations around in the name of Jesus turn situations around I like you to declare father I have laid it before you it will never return to my life again the only thing permitted to return to my life is my testimony the only thing permitted to return is my testimony in the name of Jesus hallelujah father we decree and declare right now that everything that has been dropped here as a prayer request you have instructed us to bring them before you we decree and we declare that every request that is dropped here let it be turned to a testimony it will be a testimony that your eyes will see and your hands will handle in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord God of heaven himself stepping over these situations by the power of the Holy Spirit now I pray I stand upon this and I decree and declare as I'm standing upon this request I declare by the Spirit everything that has risen above you it comes under your feet now everything that has risen above you comes under your feet now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ now in one minute out of everything you have written here what one thing do you want to see happen immediately as a token I like you to open your mouth I want you to pray I'm releasing my faith just obey instructions just do what I'm asking you to do 
I will not act in the flesh if the Holy Ghost is not directing me. Out of everything you've written here, the answers are all important, but there are some that are most important for the moment. Go ahead. My Father, my God, speedily, let this one come. Speedily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand as a family of faith and we declare over Joss, glad to state, by the Spirit of grace, let bloodshed and wars and killings and maimings and burning human beings like animals by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we bring it to an end now. speak over Kaduna State, the southern part, the northern part, now Zaria. I had something that happened yesterday, I was told, a tragic event that happened, kidnappings again or something of that sort. In the name of Jesus, Zaria, the southern part of Kaduna, the northern part all over Kaduna State, the borders from end to end we declare, Lord Jesus Christ, let, let the perpetrators of evil be discovered and brought to justice. Now, we pray for every other state, especially around the north, east, north, central, the middle belt, that is going through any kind of crisis now, of wars and killings. In the name of Jesus, we agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. This evil comes to end now. By extension, we pray for the east, we pray for the west, we pray for the FCT all over this nation. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, any gathering that is not of God, designed to bring the people of God down, designed to send people to their grave prematurely, we cancel and we scatter those events now. As for Saria, we declare. Zaria must remain a place of peace. In the name of Jesus. We are praying. Please pay attention. I came in this morning or this afternoon and my eyes, I was just sitting in the vehicle and I found out strangely, I'm not a very emotional person, but I found out that I was fighting tears. I didn't want to. I was fighting tears. And the Lord began to put it in my heart that the economy of Zaria is going down seriously. And we need to pray. Don't seem to look like something we do not want. Are we together now? Because you see, the moment people go down economically, every kind of evil increases. When young people cannot pay their school fees, every kind of evil increases. When people cannot pay their house rent, that's when you will see all these kinds of, there will be an increase in crime rate, whether you like it or not. We can be preaching and shouting here, and all kinds of mayhem will happen. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says they are taken for a prayer, not yet restored. Father, by the mercies of the God of David, we declare, O Zaria particularly we don't know what is bringing the economy down that even those who were doing well before now they have almost become like beggars Lord for your name's sake in the name of Jesus Christ bless this city bless this city bless the businesses bless the jobs Zaria be blessed Zaria be blessed Jesus Christ. Let it never be that a time will come when people will start stealing for survival. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. It was because of the hunger in Samaria that women were eating their children. To eat your child does not mean to eat your physical child. You can eat your capital. That's your child. You can eat your the savings you have put for something else. That's your child. You can eat your vision. That's your child. 
Let the mercy of God speak over this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Those who came in, yes, you're welcome. But particularly for those in Zaria. You will come out of your house in the morning. And you will return back in peace. You will go to the market. You will go to the hospital. Wherever you go to. And you will return in peace. Everyone who is under this prophetic grace. For you and for your children. We are declaring. In the name of Jesus. May you never hear that your child did not return home. Hear me, for those of you who need God to help you with resources to get out of certain dangerous places you are staying. This one is not only prayer, okay, God take control. There are regions you need to get out of that place. Wisdom is profitable to direct. I pray for you. If there is anyone here who is trusting God, any family for that supply, so that God will grant you grace to move to a, a safer place with your children and your family, we declare may that grace be released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not beg for food to eat. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray finally, the kind of favor you have never seen. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Favor is real. Believe it. There is such a thing as the favor of God. The kind of favor you have never seen. In the name of Jesus, upon you, upon your family, upon your church. In the name of Jesus Christ, experience it in this season. Experience it in this season. Hear me? Let me also encourage you. Please look up. This is not the season to be careless with your prayer life. Believers, please hear me. This is not the season to be lazy with your word study life. This is not the season to be careless with corporate fellowship. Corporate fellowship. Don't wait till it's a miracle service. This is, this is the season of intense spiritual discipline. You need to wake up to pray, obtain grace to wake up and pray. You need to wake up and study, obtain grace to wake up and study. There are wrong associations in your life you need to wave goodbye, obtain grace from God to wave them goodbye. Are we together now? Please hear me. This is a season where don't just say I am born again. You need high level discernment and spirituality. Prayer groups keep praying. Departments keep praying. Bible study groups keep studying. Every church here represented keep being faithful. Hold that torch of the gospel. Now like never before we must take evangelism serious. Not just to add membership to a church but to see that souls are saved. Because if you have a territory where believers don't submit to the government of heaven there will be trouble. Please everyone be involved actively in the work of the evangelist. Don't say I'm not a man of God. Everybody is a minister in your place of assignment. You are a student, you have colleagues. You are a worker, you have colleagues. A family man, make sure your children come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let's take the issue of spirituality serious. By the grace of God, we pray that the fire on this altar will continue to burn. Week in, week out. That there is never a week where this altar will lack the word of God. Whether you are following online streaming, Abuja service, or having service here, it does not matter. I pray that God will continue to honor his name in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And then let me encourage you finally, please be vigilant. 
My dear people, I have a responsibility to tell you. It is not to plant fear, but be vigilant. As much as possible. When we are done sharing the grace now, as much as possible. Even though I'm going to see people briefly, but I'm not going to be talking to you. I will just touch you and lay hands. And for those who, we must finish it in max, maybe 20, 30 minutes. So that you can go home. Because of security. And then because there's still a program happening here. Are we together now? And when you are going home, especially for our ladies, make sure you go home in group. Don't be careless. By 10, by 11, you are roaming around alone. You are risking your destiny. Are we together now? This is a season of discipline. Some of you who don't sit down in one place, obtain grace from this miracle service to settle down. Matter, matter. You are worried and obsessed about many things. You get up in the morning from pillar to post. They see you. They don't know whether you are a Christian or you are a non-Christian. You settle down. Are we together now? And then the final thing I will tell you is, be careful with the information you say. And things that you say around. Don't go ahead spreading rumors and saying unverified things. Crisis has started in a territory because of people who cannot say the truth. Someone will get up and say something, exaggerate something, and it will lead to trouble. I know why I'm telling you this. When you discern the spiritual climate, you know that there are spirits looking for opportunities. There is a place for wisdom. And the body of Christ must be wise people. Hallelujah. And be wise in what you do. These are final admonishments. I'll soon make the altar call now and then we'll pray. They flogged somebody and drove him away who they found late in the night after coffee. He said he was prayer walking. Now, is, is prayer walking wrong? But wisdom is profitable to direct. Are we together? You can pray a walk within a vicinity. You don't get up and start walking on the main road with revelation. The military people will, they, they will hurt you. This is what happened to that gentleman now. And to him he believes his persecution. It's not. Because they are, if that is law and a violation, the Bible says let all men be subject to higher powers. I'm saying this so that we'll be careful, especially for various prayer groups. Don't allow zeal to push you to go and do certain things and say certain things, uncontrolled, unguarded statements that heat up the territory and cause trouble. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus, God will grant us grace. Now, for the altar call before we are done tonight, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, thank you for everything you have done. But the miracle that I really need right now is a miracle of the restoration of my fellowship. Please, let's minimize moving around. Let's just respect. Let me make the altar call. Now hear me. I know that our space is limited, but this one you will come out. There are men and women, young and old, together who are saying, do not end this meeting. Let August not finish without giving me an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of my life. Others are saying, I'm making this for the first time. Others are saying, Apostle, this is a prayer of restoration. Wherever you are, Wherever you are, leave your seat. I welcome you. I will want to be the one to pray for you. Come. God bless you. Please clear the way for them. If you are coming, please come very quickly. Come. Come. Don't sit back there when you know Jesus is calling you. must be born again. Win that war tonight. Nothing to be ashamed of. You are a mighty man, a mighty woman in the making. But it is not without Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus. Run to Jesus. We have just one minute for you. If you are coming, come quickly. Come to Jesus. Whatever you ask of me, Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. That's our prayer. Come together. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I'm yours. I'm yours.
Hallelujah. Now, just just by way of of, of um, just by way of announcement, like I told you the last time, we have been able to select and upgrade leaders for Zaria. I'll be meeting with them tomorrow. Sadly, we may not be able to do the prayer, but they are going to get into their work immediately by the next miracle service or the next time I come, just before we teach, we'll have the time to pray for them. We'll pray for them tomorrow and then release them to begin their work. Please keep praying, keep drawing as many to come to Jesus. For those of you who are here, Thank you so much for this noble decision. Look at my little one here giving her life to Jesus Christ. Please lift your right hand and say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I come to you just as I am. I ask you to save me to help me and to lift me I receive remission of sin I also receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name father thank you for these ones that you have saved you are able to save even to the uttermost I pray that tonight will begin a new journey in their lives I declare your sins forgiven by the authority of the word and I declare that you are you begin to receive in its fullness the dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and a The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline